And we're back with the breakfast. And just quickly, as the federal government prepares to completely deregulate the downstream sector of the Nigerian oil and gas industry in the coming months, stakeholders in the sector have taught Nigerians to be ready to pay as much as 750 naira per litre of petrol uh, the filling station. Now, this was the highlight of stakeholders' intervention during an online workshop with the theme deregulation of the Nigerian downstream sector. The day after, the workshop was organized by industry stakeholders in collaboration with African Refineries and Distributors Association, the ARDA. Now, the downstream players, in conjunction with economic policy analysts, and relevant government agencies also outlined strategies and measures that should be deployed, should is the word, to ensure sustainable removal of uh, petrol subsidy. Well, it's also important to note that deregulation of the downstream sector and if you say subsidy removal as the provision of the Petroleum Industry Act uh, of 2021, and the president has also said that he's committed to ensuring that there's compliance. Now, it's also been reported that Nigerians are going to save about uh, 10 trillion naira annually by the elimination of subsidy on premium motor spirit, which is popularly called petrol and foreign exchange. That's according to reports by the Center for Promotion of Private Enterprise. Now, the report also stated that the country would save about 7 trillion naira annually by halting subsidy on petrol, while an estimated 3 trillion would be unlocked when the Central Bank of Nigeria eventually halts subsidy on foreign exchange. And this morning, we have Kayode Ekundayo, a publisher of Energy Times right here in Lagos. Ekundayo, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for calling. I think you're going to today. Okay, then. I uh, would like to share your thoughts. I mean, what do you think about this? A uh, few months, you know, to go, uh, there will be completion of deregulation of the downstream sector. And on the other hand, you have the stakeholders hinting that petrol might just be selling for 750 naira per litre. Okay, thank you so much. I think the reason why it's that are coming up together is because of the incoming government agenda which is that once they take over the government, they are going to remove the deregulation. I mean, they are going to fully regulate the sector. And as well as, you know, the federal government accepted in the budget that by June this year, where consumption will be deregulated fully. Yes, I was part of the stakeholder and I listened to all the speakers. But I will tell you that uh, I don't see any way where we will sell or will be sold at 750 in Nigeria. I'm still finding it difficult to believe that a liter of oil will be sold at the pump price of 750. The reason why the price is so at this period is because the price is steady. Predicted uh, on the international price. We have no refinery producing right now. So, all the, all the assumptions, including the foreign exchange, both parallel and official rate, is based on the importation. So, not until we say we have the refinery or the refinery work functioning. We cannot say that this is the actual price we are likely to pay. And please, strike my word. Even if the new government comes, there is no way the sector will be deregulated and the price will be the top price will be sold at 70. They may give the market a few ways to the free market to go and import. But I believe NFC will not be selling to back to people. To the, uh, to the consumer at that particular year. That is what is said. That is the idea of that of the regulation they want to play. Yes, they will have to give the marketer the opportunity to subscribe to to foreign exchange through the CBS at official rates or the new the incoming government to remove uh, uh, double double standard uh, foreign exchange rates. Thereby, we have a of 
naira to a dollar. And the, the other one in black market, which is up to several dollars, several naira to a dollar to two. So what I'm meditating is that the entire yeah, government will remove that thing and allow the marketers who are willing or investors who are willing to report to have uh, opportunity to subscribe to official exchange rates. Even at that, the price of oil, which the LDC is seven fifty, I'm still doing. I'm still believing that no government in the world. Even in the next one, we have the uh, subscription as, I mean, sorry, uh, the subscription is still practiced. Where price is up to that. There are certain things in uh, an agency of government, we still, uh, we still have stock. If we go to Ghana, there are functional refineries in Kumadi that is functioning. And the same as it's regulated. So without play, without put all our eggs on the potential and them that are uh, related, I think what the government again is their predictions on is the coming of steam of Tangote refinery. We expect, according to what we were told, that Tangote refinery will come on steam in the second quarter of this year. And that is the, when the big regulation will start. In Nigeria. Then mm -hmm. again, we had the Minister of uh, uh, Minister of State for Petroleum Resources said last week that the Kaduna refinery, which is 60,000 barrels per day in January, will come on in the second quarter of the year. So I think these are the refinery government predicted that they will come on stream because of the regulation. And if all this, if all this refinery comes on stream, there will be a lot of relief to the Nigerian consumer of oil. And uh, we are yet to see that coming. All that the marketers, the products are saying, they can still stay at some point until when the regulation is two years old and we see some of these refineries coming on stream. All right, uh, very interesting, Kaori Kundayo. Um, you've talked about refinery, refinery. If I was counting how many times you mentioned the word refinery, I'm sure I've gotten into the 20s. Um, but that underscores the importance of um, refining capacity of Nigeria, which is amongst one of the largest oil producing nations in the world. Uh, if we look at the, the dollar price of, uh, of, of uh, petrol uh, per liter in Nigeria today, um, I think Nigeria is one of the most, um, the cheapest uh, in the world. The cheapest is Venezuela, who sells at uh, 1.6 cents or 1 cents, uh, just above 1 cent. Libya sells at 3 cents to the liter. Iran sells at 5 cents to a liter. Angola sells at 31 cents, uh, US cents. Algeria sells at 33 cents, and so on and so forth. So Nigeria falls below. Uh, the likes of Bolivia, Bahrain, Iraq, Kazakhstan, uh, from lowest to uh, from most expensive to cheapest. Uh, Malaysia, Turkmenistan, Egypt, Kuwait, Algeria, etc., uh, etc. Et um, but Nigeria is cheaper than Saudi Arabia, uh, surprisingly, who sells their petrol at uh, 62 cents um, to per liter. Uh, so, in, in your opinion, what are these countries doing? Um, apart from refining, what are the other underlying things that they're getting right that we're not getting right? Because if Nigeria moves from the current regime of subsidy, because we're even cheaper than Russia, which produces a lot of oil, you know, cheaper than Oman, uh, very interesting. If Nigeria moves from that uh, uh, way it currently is, which is an average of 57 cents a barrel, to go to this 750 Naira, which if you look at the CBN uh, exchange rates, we're talking about uh, about uh, 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 $1.63 to a barrel, which will make it more expensive than a lot of countries. What are these other top countries doing that we are not getting right in the country? Let's take out refining. What other factors are there? Hello? Yes, yes. You said we are which other countries that are said? Yeah, so I'm saying the countries that are that Nigeria is currently um, uh, sharing the, the title of cheapest you know, petrol in the yes, world. I, I, uh -huh. I, I, yeah. 
Yeah. So, so what, what are they getting? Because if we move to this 750, we'll be ranking lower than some countries that have never seen a drop of petrol before. You know. So what are these other top countries that are not having issues? Selling below uh, $1, okay, for a liter. They are okay, you know. In fact, it will be more expensive to buy petrol in, Liber in Nigeria than in Liberia if what happens, happens, this 750. So what are the other countries? The likes of um, uh, uh, Venezuela, okay, cheapest petrol in the world. The likes of Libya, which has been at war, very second cheapest. What are they getting right apart from refining? What are the underlying things they're getting that we're not getting? Libya is at war. Thank you so much. I, I can't hear you get your question because the, the thing is echoing. So, but let me, I hear you saying about uh, countries selling at higher price. So, let me just say this. Nigeria is, is, a, is a population of over 200 million. And other countries have higher population and lower population too. Nigeria is oil producing states like Saudi Arabia, uh, Russia. See, my brother, let me tell you the truth. And this is the front talk. Oil price can be sold in all those countries. The standard of living in those countries is not comparable to Nigeria economy. That is the truth. We, me, I, I hate when people are comparing all those developed nations to other developed nations like Nigeria. We are cost of living, standard of living is so poor. We keep on saying the, the rich are the one consuming fuel. And as a result of that, the fuel price must go. I'm not having any problem with that. Because some people are still forecast, they are rich, they can afford it. But in a situation where things are not working, what do you what do you add up to that? What is working in Nigeria? What is actually working in Nigeria? Not we, have, we have to go, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, we sincerely apologize for the echoing and, and all that. You couldn't yeah. hear us too well. But um, uh, uh, we just pray that um, you know, we'll be able to reap the benefits of what God has blessed the country with so that it's not cheaper to buy petrol in Liberia than it is in Nigeria or in Haiti than it is in Nigeria. I appreciate your time, uh, Kaide Kunayo. Um, uh, thank yes, thank you so much for, for joining us. Yes, indeed. All right. Um, that's the size of our package. Kaide Kunayo is the publisher of Energy Times Lagos. Uh, it's a thrill having all of you join us this morning uh, for the breakfast. Please ensure you follow us on our social media platforms, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube at Plus TV Africa. We have a second YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We always live streaming and we have interesting content on there. My name is Kofi Ipate. I'll see you tomorrow. And I am Messi Boko. Thanks for staying with us this morning. We join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. We ask that you stay with us. Good morning.